What's going on everybody? John here, UJAM Custom Design, and today we are going to be talking about lighting. Not these ones that I have pointing at me. No, we're gonna be talking about lighting in Fusion 360. We did talk about rendering last time. We talked about creating an environment around your object. Creating an environment around your object is a great way to show exactly what it's supposed to look like where it's going to be as a finished product. And I will link to that video right here, here, over here, down here. I don't know how this stuff works. Video link above. But after we got through all of that environment creation, there was still a little bit left that just wasn't there yet. And any good photographer or videographer knows that the best way to make your product shine is with good lighting. But how do you do it in Fusion 360? Because they don't have dedicated light sources. In this video, we're gonna show you how to do it. Stick around and find out. And don't forget, if you like what you see, click the subscribe button here, here. Oh God, again, just subscribe. And you can catch me on certain nights if you wanna hang around and watch me draw something, or if you have requests of things you wanna see me draw, you can catch me live on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Jilkins. That's Jilkins with a J. J I L K I N S. Link in the description. Okay, now let's get started. Uh, we have Fusion 360 open, and we are going to be building off of two videos that we've done previously. Uh, the first of which is creating new bodies or new components uh, within an existing design space in Fusion, and I will link to that. Uh, and then the second video is the one uh, about creating rendering environments. And you can see we've created a rendering environment around our object here. Uh, we have our vertical workstation, and then we have a concrete wall and a rubber floor uh, underneath it. We're just trying to create a realistic semi-realistic view of uh, the setting that this is going to be in. Uh, so when you're trying to set up your lighting sources, you can see in this rendering space, uh, and I am in rendering space right now, uh, if I were to render this immediately, what I would get is something that looks like this right here. I'll drag this out a little bit so you can see it. Uh, you can see the color and shadowing is not that great. There's not a ton of depth here. We've got a little bit of shadowing on the wall, but really overall uh, a little bit dull. Uh, so the key to this is to create light sources. Uh, now Fusion 360 doesn't have a fantastic way of doing that, but if you know a few tricks, uh, you can get it done pretty easily. So uh, going back to that video about creating bodies and components, what I've done here is you can see under my bodies, I have body two and body three. Uh, those are my, those are gonna be my simulated light sources. Right now, I don't have them visible. So you can see right here, I just have my object within its environment. But if I turn on body two, You'll see I get this little box right here. And the same thing with body three. These are my light sources, all right? Uh, you can see they're just gray at the moment, but on the face of each one, it's very bright, all right? So let me explain that real quick. If I were to go to my appearances, you would see that I have an A-type bulb that is uh, frosted 1500 lumens and the place where you find these there's another uh, a type 800 lumens another a type uh, 800 lumens where you find those is going to be under i think it's miscellaneous and then emissive all right so here we have all of our bulbs we've got a type bulbs we have leds we've got colored leds uh, there's all kinds of interesting stuff in here for you to peruse. So uh, what I have done is you take that surface, whatever face is on the body that you want to make your emissive light source, uh, select faces under appearance, and whichever light source you want to use, uh, let's say in this case it would be like our frosted 800 lumen, I'm going to take and I'm going to drag that to the face that I want, and I'm just gonna drop it. And that's all it takes. 
All right, and I'm gonna do that with both light sources. Now, the trick to this is getting the right lighting levels. So if you were to right click on this and go to edit, uh, you would notice that you have some color properties here that you can set. You've got a roughness property, a reflectance property, which uh, reflectance is basically if there's a surface, uh, it is the amount of light that that surface is going to reflect. In this case, we're emitting light, so it's not as big of a deal. Uh, and then luminance. This is the one that is going to be your brightness, and it is specified in candelas per square meter is what that uh, is what this these units are so if I click on advanced it's gonna give me those properties you can see I've got my reflectance roughness color but uh, down here under uh, emissivity let's go with that uh, I'm gonna drop down below that and this is where my luminance is going to be set all right, so currently I have it at 120, roughly 122,000 candelas per square meter. For this scenario, that's pretty bright. Um, my recommendation is to play with these. Uh, I'm by no means a lighting expert. Uh, I, you know, understand very basics about key lights, fill lights, backlights, things like that. But uh, for actual photo shoots, that's not my thing. So. Uh, for the purposes of this video, I just want to show you how to set them and then you can play around with positioning your lights, you can play around with the luminance of them, the color of them, uh, and you know, really try to um, and really try to get the effects that you're looking for from a lighting perspective. Uh, the other thing to note here is there is a filter color uh, that you can set and there's a lot of different Pantone colors here. Uh, so you know definitely a lot of stuff that you can go through and select but for this uh, what I want to uh, what I want to show you is the difference that just having a couple of emissive light sources placed in this scene will do to the rendering uh, so I've already gone and rendered these out so you can see again my two light sources that I have and to move those around all you have to do is go back into the design space you can see them here. I'm gonna go body two. I can say move. And now you've got all your selections for moving that body around. You can rotate it to get it pointed in the direction that you want. Uh, that's really the, that's, you know, it's a, it's a decent way to adjust that, to adjust the positioning of that light source. So the next, uh, the next step is to see what this actually looks like from a rendering perspective. All right, so if I go back into my render, I've already rendered these out in the cloud. Um, if I were to just take this scene right here, let me get angled somewhat right, like right here, well, not right there because I don't want, there we go, let's do this. So something like this position right here, as you can see, our original on the left really washed out. There's not a whole lot of detail in this front face. There's not a lot of detail on the concrete wall indicating that there is any type of lighting in this scene. Uh, but if you look at our enhanced or illuminated version on the right you'll see that the face actually has some lighting on it there is depth added by the shadow on the left face of the tube uh, we can actually see the detail in the front side the holes the bolt uh, heads we got shadowing along the concrete wall it's a little it's a little flushed out uh, off to the right of our object uh, you know which we could fix by adjusting the luminance of either one of those light sources probably a little bit but overall uh, quite a bit better quite a bit more detailed a lot more depth uh, just just quite a bit brighter in general and with that if you have any comments for me please leave them down below remember to hit the subscribe button and the thumbs up button if this video was helpful to you and if there's something I missed let me know I want to hear about it I'm just an amateur and I am trying to share the little bit of knowledge that I might have with my fellow amateurs out there. Uh, so have a great time. Keep designing, keep thinking, keep learning, and keep making.